Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Bimmer Code application and how it can be used to modify the computer modules in the BMW i8. The Bimmer application is available for both Android and iPhone. You do have to pay for it, so check the link down below and you'll see more information about the application. Now, I use an Android device, so I'm going to be talking mainly about how to configure the Android device in order to use Bimmer code. However, these instructions are probably just as useful for iPhone. You want to make sure that your phone is in airplane mode, and that is because you do not want to have any other applications start up or interfere with the communication between Bimmer code and your BMW. The other thing you're going to need is a Bluetooth device that'll plug into the OBD2 port that's under the dash. Now this will communicate with your phone on Bluetooth and there are certain Bluetooth dongles that are better than others. So you got to check the link below for a few Bluetooth dongles that work well with this application. Now I'm using the VPeak and I have a link to that below as well. And so far so good, it's worked very well for me. So let's get this VPeak plugged into the BMW i8. So let's take a look underneath the dash of the i8, but first let's make sure that we have our OBD2 connector configured appropriately. On my i8, the wider part of the connector faces towards the door. So if we take a look under the dash, we can confirm this right here. There's our OBD2 connector. So I'm just gonna take this and slide it into place and give it a good push. And this has a blue indicator on it to let me know that this thing is now communicating. It's at this point that I want to go ahead and put my foot on the brake and hit the start stop button so that the i8 starts up. So what I want to make sure at this point is when I go into the settings here, I'm looking to make sure I'm in airplane mode and I'm looking at my Bluetooth settings, and I don't want to connect to the car. So by, by default, I'm going to connect to the car. So I'm going to hit disconnect, and I'm going to come over here, and if I see VP, because I've connected to it in the past, I'm going to click that. Actually, I'm going to hit this, hit connect. So now it's connecting to VP from my Bluetooth device rather than the car. If you haven't set this up, you're going to be prompted to input a pin, which is 1234 according to the manual. So now I can back out. The next thing I want to do is kill any tasks that may be running on my Android device. So I, I have an app called the Advanced Task Manager. Link in the description. I just hit the boost button. It goes ahead and clears anything that's running. Hit done. So now I should be able to connect to Bimmer code and not have any issues. So it's saying connecting to adapter. giving them me the option to select BMW i8, and if this is your first time, it'll be down at the very bottom of the list. So hit OK. Checking terminal status. Reading the VIN. And now identifying the ECUs. This process takes a while. So give it a chance to identify all the ECUs, and then it'll give you the ability to decide which internal computer module you want to modify. Here's our different electronic control units or computer modules in the i8. And we can select any of these and modify them. And one of the first things I want to turn off personally is when I hop in the i8 and I hit the start stop button, I hear that gong, gong, gong. It's a seatbelt reminder. So here I could see advanced crash safety module seatbelt reminder. So if I click on that, it'll read that particular module. Once we're in the advanced crash safety module, we can see the initial seatbelt reminder after start is active. If we click not active and OK, now this disables the gong when you hop in the BMW i8. Now there are a few other settings in here that you can make changes to, but I'm not going to make any of those changes. I just want to turn the gong off so that when I get in the car, it doesn't bong at me before I put my seatbelt on. Now that I've selected what I want, I can hit code, and it'll prompt me with an important note that everything needs to stay on, and I can't lose power, and all that good stuff. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Start Coding, and it's going to prepare the coding, and then send it to the BMW i8. Immediately, I'm starting to get errors, which is normal. Here's a chassis stabilization. Over here, we got pedestrian warning and uh, all kinds of good stuff. But we're seeing restarting ECU at this moment. And it appears that the ECU has restarted. So, I'm still going to have some errors on the screen, but I can go ahead and turn the BMW i8 off at this point, or I could continue to make some changes here with coding. For this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, so I'm going to have to restart the entire process again. But I wanted to show you exactly what happens now that I've been able to change the coding for the seatbelt gong. So I'm going to hit the start stop button, hit it again, and the car is off. And verify here, I'm going to open the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say I just hopped in the BMW i8, put my foot on the brake, start it up. No more gong noise. Hey, so now I can put my seatbelt on when I want to and I don't have those four gongs going off even if I happen to put my seatbelt on after the first gong. This is really cool. So for this one, let's take a look at the head unit. Head unit, audio, display options, iDrive system video. So we'll select that and it reads the coding data for the head unit. Now there are a few things that I want to change with the head unit. Number one, I could turn on the AM radio, which that feature is not enabled, but sometimes I'm driving and I see uh, a sign on the side of the road that says, tune to this AM station for traffic information. If I can't get that traffic information, it's useless. So in this case, I want to enable the AM radio, and I also have the ability to add temperature to the tire pressure that's really cool. So let's do these two things. I'm going to look for radio. And here is AM radio not active. I select that. I hit active and I hit OK. Next, I want to change my tire pressure control. And here it is right here. Display options, iDrive system, tire pressure control. And I can display just the pressure only as it is right now. Or I could also include the temperature. And I hit OK. There's no other settings that I want to change here, but if you look in the description below, there's a link for all the different settings that you may want to change. So at this point, I'm going to hit code and start coding. Preparing coding. And already my head unit turned off. It's writing the coding data. Finishing coding and then restarting that ECU. Here we could see the head unit is restarting. Excellent. And I should be able to go in here and look at my temperature and pressure information. Let me just see how that looks. So now, even though I'm not driving, I can see here PSI in degrees Fahrenheit. Excellent. Let's take a look at the radio setting and see if we have AM radio. There it is, AM. Next, I want to make a few changes to the body domain controller. So if we come in here to body domain controller, it's got different functions about driving modes, lighting, mirrors, start, stop function, doors, and windows. So a lot of functionality here. This one's going to take a while to read in. Now that we're in the body domain controller menu, we have a lot of options available. Now I've gone through the list of options and decided I wanted to make a few changes. Number one, when I back up and that, that passenger mirror over there tilts down when I put it in reverse. And I think if I just put it in reverse now, you'll see what I'm talking about. There we go. Automatically tilts down. When you put it in park, tilts back up. That mirror tilts down too much for my liking. I have the ability to change the percentage that it tilts down. So it's at 100% now, we'll change it to 90%. A few other options I have. I can cause the mirrors to fold or unfold if I hit the lock or unlock button on the key fob. That's really cool. And one other thing I want to do is turn on the rear 
tail lights as daytime running lights. I actually like the look of these and they would give me extra visibility driving down the road. So on a sunny day, typically only your front daytime running lights are activated. We can change that and add them here, which is really cool. So before we make that change, I'm just gonna go ahead and look in the rear view here. I don't see my daytime, I don't see any brake lights lit. If I put my foot on the brake, it lights up. <laughs> so we could tell when things are active. I do not have my light switch turned to anything but off. And I do have angel eyes up there. I can see some brightness, but I don't have any tail lights. So let's take a look at some of our options here. Okay, here's the daytime running light option. Daytime running light rear outer part. If I enable this, we'll now have rear lights, which is excellent. Let's look at our next option. Here's mirrors. This is what I want to modify. Right now it's set to mirror tilt value of 100%. I'm going to change that to 90. And I also want to cause my mirrors to fold and unfold when I lock or unlock on the key fob. So I have unfold mirrors with convenient openings. So we're going to activate that. Fold mirrors with convenient closing. We're going to activate that. And then we also have fold and unfold mirrors automatically. That's already active because I've activated the, the other options. So if I hit the code button, once again, hit start coding, it's gonna prepare the coding. And then we're gonna get a bunch of errors and bells and whistles going off as it's writing the new code. There's our bells and whistles as it's restarting the ECU. And now the vehicle's actually off. So if I just keep my foot on the brake and hit start stop, we're back online again. So the body domain controller was just recently updated. Excellent. And now taking a look in the rear view mirror, we can actually see that there are tail lights back there that are lit up. If I hit the brake, they light up even brighter, but they are lit. So we do have daytime running lights now in the rear of the i8. There's one more setting that I want to make a change to. And if I go back, I can go into the roof function. Now the roof function in this case doesn't do anything with the roof because it's just a solid roof. It does have the acoustic confirmation and the alarm system functionality. So let's read the codes for this. Now that we're in the roof function center, we can make a few changes. So our acoustic lock and unlock confirmation, that's when we use the fob to lock or unlock, that's gonna beep but I think it's too loud and too high. So I can modify the volume to from normal to low and the confirmation sound frequency from normal to low and the sound duration from normal to short. Let's see, and we could also make a change to the alarm sound, whether we want Europe, Great Britain, or the US, uh, cancel. That's fine. Let me hit code and hit start coding. So we get a normal bong for some errors, which is typical, and uh, everything seems to work appropriately here. So at this point, there are other options that I can make changes to. I'm not going to make any other changes. I'm going to back out and hit disconnect. So I'm back to the Bimmer Code application splash screen. Let me turn the i8 off. And then I can get out and we can test some of these functionalities. So one thing that I like to do when I get out of the i8 is lock it. Let's see what happens when I press the lock button now. My mirrors fold and that locking sound that comes from the rear of the i8 was faint. That's excellent. If I unlock it, ha, that's awesome. Now I get unfolding mirrors. I love it. So some of the other things that we tested were the brake lights and uh, some of the changes to the head unit system. So there are many, many things that we could change on the BMW i8 with Bimmer code, but this is just a small taste. I appreciate you watching today. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing as I add new BMW content very often and ring that bell for notifications.
Thanks for watching and happy motoring.